Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Delaney. So for today's video, we are going to be ranking all of my eyeshadow palettes that I've tried in the year 2020, which I have seen a few YouTubers do this before. Um, mainly Samantha March. She's the only one I can think of at the moment, but I'll try to link a few others down below as well. And I will also be linking her video down below since it was my inspiration for this video. Um, I have a lot to get through today. So I'm gonna try not to ramble and not gonna be giving a full in-depth review on these palettes. Uh, you will probably see more in-depth in like my collection videos, which I will link down below as well as a future declutter video that will be coming very, very, very shortly. So if you're interested in watching me rank all of my eyeshadow palettes that I have tried in 2020, then keep on watching. All of the makeup on my face will be linked down below, of course, but I will be talking about the palette that I'm wearing today. If you're interested, just hold on a little while. So I have a total of 44 palettes to get through. So we are going to be going really, really, really fast because I don't want this to be a super, super, super long video. So let's get right into it. All right, we're gonna start with the bottom and then move towards the best. Disclaimer, if I rank any of your favorite palettes, really, really low. Sorry about that. It's just my opinion. It's makeup, whatever. Yeah, that's that. So starting with number 44, which is our lowest ranked palette, the Ace Beauté Scarlet Dusk Palette. I will pop up a picture for you right here for reference, but I do know that I got it in 2020 because I have an Instagram post about it. That's how I know. That's the only reason I know. And I wasn't really vibing with the color story as much. I swatched a couple shades, wasn't my favorite formula, didn't really reach for it after that. And I did get that in a BoxyCharm, I will say that. A lot of the ones in the bottom sadly are from BoxyCharm, including the next few palettes actually. So next we have Too Faced Palm Springs palette, which coincidentally I also don't have. I did end up giving it to a friend and she, uh, I don't know if she likes it or not. I never hear her talk about it, but it just wasn't for me. I don't have too many Too Faced palettes. They're not usually my go-to formula and I knew she would probably get more use out of it. So I passed it along. It's not, it wasn't very memorable, I must say. I swatched a few shades and it was okay. The next palette was also from BoxyCharm. Uh, yeah, this one is the Morphe and Manny MUA eyeshadow palette. Um, I will open this up for you since I have it in front of me. This is the color story, very basic, comes with two highlighting shades as well as the eyeshadows. I'm not a huge fan of when the eyeshadows are with the highlights. The shade selection is okay. I'm just not a huge fan of Morphe's formula. I've had a few palettes from them and I've decluttered almost all of them. Sorry, Manny, I love you. I love your formula of your other palettes. I'm sorry. <laughs> that this even, I don't know, this this was a whole lot. Oh, next up is another BoxyCharm palette, sense of theme. All right, this is the Pure Festival 2.0, and I actually had the Pure Festival palette, and I believe I decluttered that a long time ago. Here she is. <laughs> this color scheme I actually did like a lot better than the other one, which I will pop up a picture here, but that one was an older palette. These are very lackluster. I don't know. I just never used this. Should I keep it? Oh no, 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 no. So the blue swatched a lot better than the neutrals. I actually tried the neutrals and that's I think why I didn't really love it. Uh, but yeah, the color story is not my favorite ever. There's just, I have these neutral shades like 10 times over and it just has a new pop of blue and a pop of purple and it's just not my vibe, so. Next up is also a BoxyCharm palette. And when I say BoxyCharm, I mean I received it in BoxyCharm, not that it's created by BoxyCharm, just in case anyone was curious about that. This is the Illuminati X Issa palette. And this one I tried once and it was on camera. It worked okay. I got a look that I liked out of it, but it was a lot of work for that one look. And I've since found palettes with the colors that I used that I like better. Um, okay, so moving on to number 39, which is also from a BoxyCharm. This is the Day to Slay eyeshadow palette, and it's very bulky, not a fan of that. Here's the inside, which is really not that bad. Like, I like these shades, but I don't think this would be good on a deeper complexion, honestly, because you only have a few darker shades in the palette, and everything else is like my skin color. Just, it's very powdery, 
but I mean, they're buttery. Like, I don't know. They're okay. They're just not great. Like they're really soft to the feel, but when you're applying them, it's just eh. And next up we have number 38 which is The Queen by Eloise. This was also in a boxy charm. I really wanted to like this a lot more than I did. The color scheme is gorgeous. I love this vibe, like the pinks, the purples, the blues. I've really been into colorful eyeshadow this year. I was really hoping to like this a lot more than I did. The shimmers did not blow me away. They're okay, and the mattes were okay. Really would love to try more of their stuff, but sadly, this was just not my vibe. I really did like the color story though. It's beautiful, and the artwork on the front is absolutely stunning. I actually have another palette that I can't seem to find, and it might have gotten lost in the move, but it was Beauty Bakery's Breakfast in Bed. I will pop up a little picture of it right here so you can see that. I did not declutter it intentionally, but I'm not sure where it went. Not my favorite formula ever, but but not like completely unworkable either. The color scheme I thought I was gonna like, but it just kind of wasn't really for me. And obviously now I don't really know where it is. So yeah, I'm sorry, Beauty Bakery. I didn't really love it that much, but I have seen a lot of their other products and they look really gorgeous. So I'm not, you know, to, I'm not holding that against the brand really. Like it, their eyeshadows may just not be for me, but I'll, I would love to try some of their other stuff. This is the first thing to not be from BoxyCharm on our list. And this is number 36 and number 35. And it makes me really sad to say this because I'm on their PR list and I don't want to say anything bad against them. Like I'm not, obviously I'm going to state my opinion. Um, <laughs> and just because I get PR from them doesn't mean that I'm not going to be honest about what I think. And I think this is proof, but Pixie. Their eyeshadows were not my favorite. These are very like natural glam kind of eyeshadows, but not in the very pigmented way that I'm used to, not like soft glam. This is like running out the door, soft wash of color, very subtle natural shimmer kind of girl. That's not me, obviously. Like I love color, I love pigment. I just want glitter and shine and I just want I want you to notice that I'm wearing makeup. Like, I don't need to look like I don't have any makeup on. That's not the point. That's not why I spend an hour doing my makeup every day. Hazelnut Haze is the one that I probably would put lower than the other one. This is the inside here. Beautiful color story. When I got this, I was so thrilled. I thought that these were just gonna be like the most used eyeshadows in my collection. Like, it just is, it's another one of those that's like really soft and it swatches really, really beautifully, but the shimmers are just not there. And they, they barely show up on my hand. The satiny shades, they're not really matte, but they, they work really well, I will say. For me, shimmers can make or break a palette. And since it's such a small palette and I use a shimmer all the time, it really kind of deterred me from using it. Slightly higher than that one is Rosette Ray. And this is the inside of that beautiful color story. This one's actually more me because of these mauve tones in there. And I love the like slightly darker shades that really can like amp up the look. Same formula as the other one, but I do like this color story slightly better. So that's why that one's a little bit higher up. There were a lot of other products that I loved from Pixie. So again, like I'm saying with all these brands, like I'm not hating on the brand. I actually love other products from Pixie as you saw in my best of 2020 video, but sometimes the eyeshadow palettes just ain't it. So this is from Smashbox. This was also a BoxyCharm palette. We're getting right back into those. This is the Smashbox Photo Edit Eyeshadow Trio, and this is in Holy Crop. And originally I thought I was gonna really like this just because, oh, it's like super easy to make a cute look. Really, like you only have these three shades, so it's really easy to make a look, right? Well, Sadly, not so much. So this is the only matte in the palette, this darker brown. So you could deepen up the outer edge. And then this shade is a shimmer shade, which is pretty, but just not my favorite. Like it's okay. But I think the lack of versatility with this is what gets me. Like I don't mind a small palette. If the look I get out of this, I can't get out of any other palette. Sadly, I could probably get this look 10 times over in my collection. 
I do like that it's compact, but I just it's just not for me. This is the Ciate London The Editor palette, and it's the New England one. This is very boring. <laughs> Plastic packaging, the front doesn't really make any sense. Like palm leaves and then New England, it's very odd. And it's really hard to open. Oop, there we go. Mostly shimmers, not a lot of mattes. I don't really know what to do with this. <laughs> it's pretty, but not my favorite. So now 32, which it pains me to say this because I loved, 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 loved the original one of this. And it came in a boxy charm as well as its counterpart did originally, the one that I loved. This is The Essentials 2 from Violet Voss. I loved The Essentials palette. I got so much use out of it. I still do. I still have her. She's still in my collection. Here is the inside. I thought I was going to absolutely love this palette because you have your neutral row and then you have your fun, colorful kind of row. But in reality, it's only four colorful shades and then the rest are neutrals. Um, I found that these shimmers were not as good as the original and the mattes were okay. They were good but not great. This was from Too Faced. This is the natural matte uh, palette here. And here is the inside. The color story is just so boring. <laughs> so basic, so boring. I can't see this working on too many deeper skin tones, honestly. Like, yes, you do have this darker matte shade, but like, I don't know. They all come off lighter on the skin, at least for me, than they, do, they are in the pan. You kind of get three rows of very, 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 very similar look. The packaging is really bulky and I'm just not a fan of this. So now we are getting into a little bit of a controversial topic here. Um, so I do have these and I did try these in 2020. So I do feel like I should technically rank them even though I'm not promoting the brand at all. And that's really why they're lower down in my list. I actually originally really liked this brand. Um, and then some things started happening. I mean, apparently things had been happening for a while, but I wasn't aware. Um, this is number 30 and number 29, and that is the Bloodlust palette and the Alien palette from Jeffree Star Cosmetics. So I haven't really talked about them on my channel. I will say that I kept these in my collection so far because A, they were so new to my collection. I got them in 2020, like early 2020, um, and I didn't want to waste my money. I had already spent my money on these and I was gonna have to sell them, but it was during COVID and I didn't wanna sell my palettes and stuff and worry about shipping to people in different parts of the country with COVID and everything being huge and a risk. So I didn't really wanna do anything with that. But I will say that like, I still wanna use my makeup. Even though I'm not promoting it on my channel as much, I still wanna use it. So I'm just gonna be brief in my thoughts about the palettes, but I just wanted to say that real quick. They just don't bring me as much joy as they once did. And that's part of the reason why they're so low. Another reason is because I can't use them on camera anymore because I don't wanna support the brand. Starting with 30, this is the Bloodlust palette and it is obnoxiously large and bulky, which I don't like. Here is the color story on the inside beautiful purples. I love purple. <laughs> so yeah, naturally I really did gravitate toward this color scheme. In the future, I may try to depot this and put it in a Z palette or some kind of magnetic palette just so I can keep the shades and maybe I'll just like scrape the embossment out of here just so I can use the eyeshadows. But yeah, I enjoyed the formula. I enjoyed the looks I got out of it, but it definitely does not give me the same joy as it once did. This is the next one. This is Alien. And I, this is the one that like, I wish I could still talk about. Uh, but this is the color story and it's really grungy in a really cool way. Very unique color story to anything that I have currently in my collection. I actually bought this from someone off of Poshmark or Mercari, I forget which one, but they were actually discontinuing this palette and I hadn't had it. And I really wanted it because I really liked the color story. I didn't buy it from the brand if that counts. I bought it from someone else who had bought it. So hopefully that makes up for it just a little bit, but I, I really do wish I could use this more on camera, but it is what it is. This is also a BoxyCharm box item. This is from Fenty Beauty. This was in their Fenty uh, BoxyCharm premium box. And this packaging, stunning. I really, really love the vibe of this. The color story is nice. The formula, however, I'm not a fan of. First of all, it's super neutral with a pop of blue, which I think was like a huge theme of past 
products up close, you would think that these shimmers would be so stunning and beautiful, but really they just kind of disappear a little bit. Mattes are not my favorite. Yeah, this just was not for me. So if you've watched any beauty person on YouTube, they are probably raving over these. And I don't know if I got a bad batch or what, but these were not really my favorite. Now, granted, I haven't used them multiple times. Maybe it was just a hard layer on the top. I'm not sure. I might just have to keep kind of digging in there to see if these work a little bit better. These I ranked together because they're very small. <laughs> these are the e.l.f. bite Size palettes. I have uh, Cream and Sugar, which is the neutral one. And then I have Rose Water, which is like the mauve toned one. These, so far, I like the mauve toned one better. I feel like it's more pigmented and a little easier to use. And the, but I would think that the neutral one would be easier to formulate, but it just was so dry. Like, I don't know. I really dug my finger in and it just wasn't like doing much. It's just very powdery, but I mean, it's $3. So it's really hard to, you know, it's hard to knock that. And ironically, I just purchased more of these one of them. I, I purchased one more of these, but it came out in the new collection. So you'll see that in my ranking for next year. <laughs> next up is the Huda Beauty Nude in Light. So I love the way this looks on the inside. So gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. These shimmers are beautiful. The mattes though, they're so light. Like I'm a really light skin tone, but I have trouble getting different looks with this palette. Like these mattes, other than this one, obviously you'll be able to see that one a little bit more, but these all look the same on my eye. I like the packaging, love the color story on the inside. I just wish that I could get a little bit more variety from this. I can get some really pretty looks out of this, which is why it's kind of in the middle of our ranking. And the shimmers are really pretty. They're not my favorite. They're a little bit on the thinner side, but, ooh, that one's pretty. But yeah, so they're okay. Number 25 is a BoxyCharm palette. So this is from Alamar Cosmetics. And I actually was really hoping to get this palette. So here is the inside. This is the Spanglish palette. I really like the color scheme, color scheme of this palette. Gorgeous. The shimmers are absolutely stunning. But I will say the mattes were not my favorite. They worked okay, just not my favorite. Um, and that's why it's kind of in the middle. But I just don't find myself reaching for this palette very often. I think the color scheme is just a little hard for me to kind of wrap my head around and make different looks. All right, next up we have the Pop Beauty Light Show Palette in Fire Fit. So this color story is called Fire Fit and their palettes are called the Light Show Palettes, I believe. I believe that's how it works but they have some really cool textures in here um and like so you have two pressed glitters and you have some shimmer shades this one's like a marbled shimmer shade and then you have some mattes and they're they're kind of that silky matte kind of like the pixie ones and i believe that they're sister brands <laughs> this is a beautiful palette i will say like it is kind of in the middle but now we're starting to get into palettes that i actually do use and i do enjoy and there are a lot of them <laughs> because we're kind of in the middle of the ranking right now so it's going to be kind of hard to differentiate between certain ones but i actually do use this a lot i mean i don't know if you can tell by the divots in there this is actually a vegan palette i believe which is amazing. I love that. It's cruelty free and vegan. I actually do like these pressed glitters. I think they perform really beautifully on the eyes. The mattes, even though they are that kind of satiny shade, they're very pigmented, very blendable, and they're beautiful. The shimmers are not my favorite. They're kind of thin. So I do pair them with a different shimmer, whether that's a like one of the fairy lights or another liquid shadow basically, or something that's like a glitter by itself. That would kind of amp it up a little bit. So next up we have Anastasia Modern Renaissance. Um, but I tried it in 2020, so that's why it's included in here. So here is the color story on the inside. Beautiful, neutral, everyday kind of color scheme. I really like this formula. I My favorite Anastasia palette is the Sultry palette and it's just so cool toned and beautiful, blendable, so good. Similar formula, really enjoy it, 
but this color scheme is not my favorite. It's not my most reached for Anastasia palette. So for that reason, it is kind of in the middle, especially when it's kind of put into competition with all of the palettes that I've tried in 2020. I think for its time, Modern Renaissance was like this huge thing. And so I really enjoy having it in my collection. Um, but sadly, it is more on that like neutral everyday side. And it's, I don't want to say boring. It's not boring but a little boring, I don't know. Nowadays with the makeup world, this is a little bit on the boring side, but there's a place for it, okay? This is like your everyday I'm going to work and I need something to throw on my eyes that is dependable and I know can blend out super easily and make some bomb looks that are very neutral. All right, now we are at number 22 and we're starting to get into palettes that I actually really like. So a boxycharm palette and i actually really enjoy this so this is the caliente palette by artist couture you saw this in, if you watched one of my unboxings recently this was my december box i believe can't remember which one but here's the inside of the palette absolutely gorgeous the shimmers are beautiful this is also kind of that sunset vibe kind of like the pop beauty one which i, I do like that color scheme obviously but this is a little bit more compact and I actually do enjoy this formula better than the Pop Beauty one. Uh, it's just super pigmented, very nice to work with, blends out very well. And I do wish that there were more shimmers in here, honestly, but I actually really liked this palette and I continue to use it. The next one is from Marc Jacobs. This is number 21. And this is the Fantasine eyeshadow palette. So I got this in my Sephora haul at the very beginning of the year of 2020. And I don't know when this came out, but I did try it in 2020, so that's why it's here. <laughs> but here's the color story. And again, similar to Modern Renaissance, it is on the neutral basic side. And it's beautiful, but like they're very, very, very light. And my style has shifted so much this year. I am now more into bold makeup and I used to be very into neutrals and that's like all I would do. And now I'm branching out into color and I really, really like it and really enjoy it. So this one, I do love their formula. Marc Jacobs has an amazing formula for eyeshadow and I love their palettes, like how they're all the same shape, but it's just not my most reach for color story now, even though I love the mauves, like I still love mauves, but it's just not what I reach for every single day anymore but I'm so glad to have it in my collection. I still use it a ton, but just not as much as the palettes that will be coming up soon. And now we're getting into the top 20. So top 20 eyeshadow palettes. Hi everyone. <laughs> I'm sorry if this video is long, I really do. I'm gonna be rambling about the palettes that I love. Number 20 is from Ofra Cosmetics and this is the Black Friday palette. Beautiful packaging love it like it's a little bit on the thicker side but i don't mind that too too much just because it's actually a nice kind of magnetic palette so if i run out of these shades i can put other shades in there and they pop out really easily and i can use this as kind of a a magnetic palette for just any other shades that fit in here so <laughs> here's the inside and it's such a cool color scheme this if you watch my try on video with this I thought all of these shades looked the same at first. I don't know if I was just in really bad lighting or what, but I thought they were just all different shades of gray. And it couldn't be more false. So different. I don't have anything like this in my palette collection as of right now, other than this. So it's very unique, which is very nice to see, especially for 2020. Like we're getting into different stuff, right? So much has been done in makeup and I feel like not a lot of palettes look like this. So. I'm very happy with this. I really did enjoy the way it performed. The one thing I will say is the shimmers are more just like straight metallic and I wish they could be a little bit more wet looking on the eye um, or also have glitter. <laughs> I know that that is a personal preference, but it's just who I am. Next up, we have ColourPop. Okay, so this is the Wild Nothing palette. I have a video trying this on if you're interested uh, in the collection, but this is the inside, beautiful, but again, very light, very neutral. <laughs> I love the little pop of green here. I love the Super Shock shadow in there, but it is still a very light, neutral palette. It's not my absolute favorite palette, but it has that same ColourPop formula, great quality. Like I really like how they performed 
and the shimmer shades are obviously beautiful like look at this green i love that shiny green shade and the super shock i love having the super shocks in the palette kind of like sweet talk was the first time i ever saw that packaging 10 out of 10 for this palette so so gorgeous it's not the most used color pop palette in my collection i will say so this is number 18. this palette only ranks this high because of one reason and that is shimmers in the palette they are stunning these shimmers are so different and unique i don't know like beauty bay has this very wet shimmer here are these shimmers from the beauty bay and nikki tutorials collaboration palette absolutely stunning i mean the shimmers alone is what's making this palette rank higher the mattes are this weird thing where <laughs> they're beautiful they they perform pretty well on the eyes there's also it's kind of a weird color story so if you're not like if you don't really know what you're doing with color it's really hard to do without it getting muddy i still haven't completely mastered that but i will say the mattes they do this weird disappearing act thing where you can use this palette for an instagram video and make it really beautiful and then an hour later the mattes start to fade it's so weird <laughs> but the shimmers though they stay like this for a, a while longer than the mattes do they still aren't the most long lasting but i mean come on like those shimmers are so pretty <laughs> love the outside the inside i just wish a few things could have been different so this is the natasha denona mini retro palette this one i use a ton so now we're getting into the palettes that i use like all the time <laughs> like all the time i keep kind of switching through them this one actually stays in my everyday drawer as well as all the other mini natasha denona palettes but here is the color story on the inside i love these mauvey pinks but even more so i love the greens i am in love this shade is gorgeous as a topper i really really enjoy this mini palette so so nice we have the ColourPop mandalorian the mandalorian and ColourPop collaboration it's called the child with baby yoda so so cute packaging 10 out of 10 and the inside is so so cute i love it so this is where you get your greens green has been a thing this year and i'm so happy about it because i love greens i have green eyes i feel like it really makes it pop also look how cute this little man is Ugh. but i love this color story i love this gold oh my god this gold is something else i don't know like color pop who told you you could do this oh yeah there we go it's so metallic gold. it also has a super shock in here and it's more of a topper shade you have your green shimmers and you have a darker brown so you can deepen things up as well as your darker green shade so you can really get some depth in there so so beautiful you can go neutral you can go green perfect this is an also a color pop palette this is the collaboration with raw beauty christie and color pop this is the at forest site palette and absolutely gorgeous on the inside here is the color story i love the mushrooms everywhere it's like a rainbow palette but more sophisticated that's probably the best way i could talk about it um it's so pretty you could go neutral you could go green you could go purpley you could have the pop of blue in there just so many different directions to go with this palette i really really like this you can get a lot of great looks out of it beautiful packaging my girl christy you killed it so so happy with this now we are moving to number 14 which is the winky lux coffee kitten coffee kitten palette yep. the inside is very neutral very boring it smells like coffee <laughs> so that i love mattes in here are so beautiful they look airbrushed on the eyes i feel like they'd be really good for like especially mature skin i feel like they do like have a blurring effect also the shimmers in here are very metallic but not glittery <laughs> that's the only wish i could have is if these were glittery just for personal preference um but i just added glitter on top and it's perfect so this is absolutely perfect for if i want to go to work like really fast i need something really 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 quick gorgeous I can always count on this palette so very dependable love that it's scented like coffee and the packaging is adorable 
you can get this at Target. Now we are at number 13, and this is from Juvia's Place, and this is the Wahala 2 palette. This palette has my heart. Uh, this brought back my love for color. I had already loved colorful eyeshadow, and there were some other palettes that really got me loving color, but this kind of rejuvenated that love. Rejuvenated? Juvia's Place. Hmm, okay. <laughs> but I love the artwork. It's so bright, so fun. And when you open it up, look at this color scheme. Like, wow. If you've seen 2020's best, this makes a, an appearance somewhere, I think. Maybe, potentially. <laughs> it's fitting because it's in the top of my palettes, right? But this color scheme is just out of this world. The pressed glitters, I love the formula. I use them a ton. I actually used this for New Year's and it was beautiful, lasted all night. There's not a lot of turquoises in my collection. So this little row here is just awesome. Also these royal blues are very hard to find in my collection. It has a multi-chrome in here. I swatched it in the other palette, but you have to see it again if you didn't see that uh, video. But look at the shift, I mean, emerald green to gold to pink. So absolutely stunning. And Juvie's Place has a sales all the time. So this is just so freaking beautiful. So this one was in a boxy charm and it's neutral, like really, really, really neutral. And it's all matte. Like, why do I love that so much? I don't know. But this is the Busy Art neutral mattes and we just got this in December. So it feels weird placing this so high but it's your staple mattes that you would need to create any look. These are beautiful. They're super pigmented, super blendable, really easy to use. I set my lids with, the, with these shades all the time, especially before I go in with colorful palettes. I can actually use this on its own for, pal for my eyeshadow that day and make a great look out of it and then use one of my single shadows to accompany it. This is an amazing palette. Is it worth the price? I don't know. It's like $80. Like the packaging sure is not worth it, but the quality of the shadows is really good. So I don't know how to feel about that, but I love it. <laughs> this one I got recently as well. So this was like at the end of 2020, but my friend actually gave me hers cause she wasn't using it. And she thought it could have a better home with me cause I'm obsessed with eyeshadow. This is the ColourPop Lilac You A Lot. I'm not sure if this came out in 2020 or not, but obviously it came to me in 2020 absolutely gorgeous colors like you i have the it's my pleasure palette which is the purple one and that one actually leans more pink than this one this one is straight up purple and the shimmers in here are stunning i'm not gonna swatch every single one of them but this one is gorgeous so you can make a ton of gorgeous looks out of this and I love purple eyeshadow, so no wonder this was one of my favorites this year. Now, okay, now we're in the top 10, so it's getting really real now. I have four palettes from this collection, but three of them are ranked very close together. I have these three from Juvia's Place. One of these is ranked higher than all the others. But first we have the Topes. This is just so gorgeous. Like, if you want a neutral palette, this is it. This is so pretty. This is all you need. And I actually got these when they were on sale for $10. They were like $9.80 or something like that. And I got four of them and it was the best decision ever. <laughs> so here's the taupes. Great for a neutral look. Beautiful shimmers though. The mattes blend out super easy. Just really pigmented. So, so good. And Juvia's Place quality, so amazing. All right, next we have the violets coming in number nine, and this one is gorgeous as well. This one's just a deeper, richer, more version of the Lilac You A Lot, and I'm actually wearing this one on my eyes today. So these shimmers performed beautifully, the mattes performed beautifully. I've actually been wearing this for hours, <laughs> and this is how it looks. I haven't even touched it up, so that's that absolutely stunning. The only thing I will say is that there are four shimmers and two mattes. I almost would prefer if there was one more matte and one less shimmer. Number eight, we have the mauves and this is gorgeous as well. This actually has four mattes and two shimmers, which this one is a shimmer you can use with any look ever. And the pans are nice and large. You get a lot of product. Look at that. I mean, come on. 
sorry I'm not swatching the mattes, but the mattes are no fun. But this dual chrome shade, it's like a bubblegum pink to a peachy. And it's super glittery, super beautiful. Coming in at number seven, we have the Glamlight Pie Palette. So this one, uh, I did do an unboxing of the Holiday Foodie Box from Glamlight. And this was in there. And this is the Pie Palette. It's shaped like a pie. How cute is that? It's nice and squishy. And it has glitter for the cherry pie filling. Love it. Opening it up, this is the inside. It comes with a blush and a bunch of eyeshadows. <laughs> Can I just say that the Glam Light Shimmer formula is absolutely stunning. Like, it's so, so pretty. I've swatched them before, but I'll swatch them again. There's peach, blueberry, and blackberry. They're so wet looking on the eyes and they do have some glitter in there that just makes them look so, so good on the eyes. I mean, any skin tone, can wear these and they're just super pigmented and super beautiful. So I really like that. And the mattes performed really well as well. And I actually really like this blush. I normally don't like when face products are in an eyeshadow palette, but this I don't mind. It's on theme and it's a beautiful blush. So I actually reach in here for the blush sometimes, even if I'm not using the palette. So this is one of my most used palettes of all time. Um, <laughs> I dig into this so, so often. This actually did come out in 2020, I checked. <laughs> I couldn't remember when it came out, but it's so heavily used in my collection, it's actually insane. So this is the Natasha Denona Mini Gold. And as you can see, the lettering is faded. I've traveled with it a lot. I mean, 2020 was the year of very little traveling, but when I did travel, even if it was just to my parents' house down the road, this was it. Like, oh my God. Look at the divot in this shade. This gold is one of my favorite golds I have in my collection. See how used it is? Like, it's insane. There's a whole crater in there. It's from my finger just going in and digging in. And I use it every time I use this palette. I do this shade first as a transition. I do this on the outer corner and then I do this on, and then I do this on the lid. And it's the most metallic gold just so gorgeous and it has this glitter to it as well like the ColourPop one is very metallic but no glitter and this one just has the most sophisticated tone of gold this is like a grown-up gold palette you know like it makes me feel so classy and sophisticated and i love 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 to use it i love how compact it is perfect for traveling very very deserving of the number six spot I can't believe we're at number five. This feels like it's taking forever, but I am promise I'm gonna to try to edit it so it's not as much for you. But this is from Kaleidos. This is the Escape Pod palette and it's absolutely gorgeous. It is a little bit on the thick side. That's my one complaint. The inside is so worth it. Look at that. Also, this lilac shade here is an escape key, which I thought was the cutest thing ever. You can see the indents from my fingers. Um, the mattes in here are gorgeous. Kaleidos has one of my favorite matte formulas. And I know I said that about some others as well, but this is truly like, I think number one. Yeah, I think Kaleidos has my number one formula for mattes. I'm sorry to everyone else out there, but it's true. They are just so smooth and they blend out beautifully. <laughs> and they're not like luxury brand, but they're also not cheap either. Like they're a nice mid, level brand but they this kaleidos is based in china so sometimes the shipping costs are a little extra but the quality of these shadows is so worth it and the packaging on everything that they do is just amazing so this is a duochrome like blue purple shade then you have your beautiful metallic greens this this is like a topper shade here you just have all these different mattes to choose from and you could go really vibrant with it or you could go more neutral with these browns and then just top it with one of the peachier ones or the neutral uh shimmers but again kaleidos their shimmers out of this world like look at that green and tell me that's not the most beautiful freaking green you've ever seen in your life how gorgeous wow <laughs> it's so reflective and beautiful oh, 
Galados is one of those brands that I want everything that they make. Like every launch that they get, I'm probably going to buy because their quality is just always wonderful. Whether it's their complexion products that they've released, like their bronzers, uh, contours, blushes, highlights, or if it's their eyeshadows, everything has been amazing. So look at this packaging gorgeous. I've been talking a lot, so my lipstick is coming off, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> so that was definitely worth the top five spot. Now, moving on to number four, which is the berries, which matches my nails. How cute is that? This is the Juvia's Place palette that I said I was holding off on. This is better than the rest. I don't know why. I don't know who gave it permission to be so good. This is just absolutely stunning. And I know I say absolutely stunning a lot. I'm trying my best not to, but it just, it just happens. Cause look at this, look at it. So gorgeous. If you have a deeper complexion, this is going to look so gorgeous on you. I can't even, but <laughs> I literally can't even, but I love it on me too. Like green eyes, I feel like berry tones really make them pop. And so using this, my eyes were like, I don't know. I, I'll insert a picture and you can tell me, but like, I was feeling myself that day. <laughs> I just, I just tried these like recently and they're in the top. It's crazy. Their shimmers are absolutely just, ugh. They're so yummy and soft and pigmented and like one swipe and you're good. They make such beautiful, vibrant looks together. Oh my God. I just, I'm so in love with this palette. It's crazy. Number three. This is from Kaleidos, again. <laughs> this is the Futurism 6 Lunar Lavender Palette. I love purples. If you've noticed anything from the color stories that are in my top palettes, like the purples are it. This is so beautiful. I've used this so often. I get, I get compliments every time I wear this, especially when I wear this shade here, which is just this beautiful purple to blue duochrome. And then this one's a pinky to purple kind of duochrome kind of shift. So beautiful. You can go a little bit more neutral with these shades here and then put the purple right on top. What I usually do is I either use this shade here with the neutrals or I use this shade here with the purples. So beautiful. The mattes are amazing. Like I said, Kaleidos has my favorite formula of mattes. <laughs> and the shimmers are just out of this world amazing so this color story is me and i love it i've used this so often and every time i get compliments it's actually crazy you've seen this in my recent haul this is the moon spell palette by lunar beauty i have just recently tried this i was like almost do i do i rank this so high because i re i just grabbed it. I just started using it. I didn't know if it was fair to put this so, so high in my ranking, but I have used it so much in the past since I've gotten it that I've actually used it more than some of the palettes that I have ranked. So that's why this is justified. So <laughs> this is the Moonspell palette by Lunar Beauty. Pa the packaging, 10 out of 10. Absolutely gorgeous. I love the vibe. <laughs> You'll, you can see more about it in my other haul video, but the color story is absolutely gorgeous. Take a shot every time I say that. <laughs> You're just gonna be gone by the end of this video. But you have your purple row, you have your neutral row, and you have your greens, which purples and greens are my life. Obviously, you've noticed the color schemes that I gravitate towards. And then you have your neutrals. So you have nice neutrals to pair with those other shades. But normally what I do is just like, I do a purple one, a green one, or a neutral look. Or sometimes I do the green with like a little pop of purple. Cause I, I really like to do that. Especially this shade right here. I like to pop that on my inner corner and underneath my brow bone when I'm wearing a green look to give it some extra kind of pizzazz. <laughs> but the mattes in here, are amazing very similar to how the kaleidos mattes perform i love the mattes so so much the shimmers are really good but kaleidos just wins on the shimmers like the shimmers are absolutely so 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 pretty and i don't want to knock the formula of this at all when i say this but they're it's just not my tippy top favorite shimmer formula which leads me to number one best palette of 2020 by far for me is a neutral palette. Why? Why? 
like I've loved colorful looks. Why is a neutral palette my number one? Well, this is the Kaleidos <laughs> Futurism 7 Sashimi City. First of all, packaging, again, is a win. But when you open it up, this is not just your basic neutral palette. It kind of is, but it kind of isn't. So you have your mattes that are your basic neutral gal, and then you have your peachy undertoned mattes, which are so beautiful together as well. But then you have this beautiful peach to pink duochrome, and then the most glitterified shade in the world. Like, <laughs> I've tried so many shimmer glitter formulas, and this takes the cake. It's just my favorite. It's absolutely stunning. The way that it just reflects on your eyes is insanity. Look at that. It has to be in low light for it to really catch, but it's kind of, you see it kind of in the back, right? So as the light kind of goes away, you can see it start shimmering. It's just, it adds so much movement to your lid. It's not like a regular shimmer that just looks wet. This has so much glitter in there that everywhere you move your eye, it catches the light in this gorgeous way that makes it look so pretty. And it's sophisticated too. It's not just, oh, you have glitter on your eyes. It's a beautiful, sophisticated glitter. I don't know. That's the best way I could put it. But the mattes in here, they work amazingly. I love the matte formula. As I said, it's my favorite matte formula. So that paired with my favorite shimmer formula is why this palette is at the top for 2020. Sashimi City, yay. <laughs> so that was my ranking for all my palettes that I tried in 2020. I hope this wasn't too long for you, but hey, if you waited till the end, thank you for watching. <laughs> Cause I know that was probably a lot, but uh, that was really fun. That was a lot of palettes, but it was fun. So I'm really excited to see what's going to be coming from 2021. I actually do have a couple palettes coming my way for 2021 already. So stay tuned for those. I will have more content posted very, very soon. And as long as well as a declutter, because I feel like I have so many eyeshadow palettes, I need to get some out to bring some in. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you liked this. Uh, please like and subscribe if you could. I would really, really, really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.